What's up, peers, and welcome to the Wasabi Wallet 2.0 release party. Uh, we have been tinkering on some pretty cool Bitcoin technology over the last two and a half years. And now, finally, it's to a point where it's good enough to release. Uh, so we're quite excited. A lot of thought and a lot of research and a lot of work from uh, quite many contributors uh, have been part of this software development. And uh, we're quite proud of what we've achieved. Uh, so today, a um, big chunk of the team is here uh, for us to celebrate uh, that big monumental milestone to hopefully make that vision of a monetary system that is not just sound and hard and verifiable, uh, but also private uh, for everyday users by default. Uh, and I think we've done some quite substantial contributions to that vision of frictionless and effortless privacy by default for Bitcoin by solving a lot of these difficult problems on the client side. And that's what Wasabi Wallet is all about. Um, so maybe Adam, uh, a couple of words from you. Tell us why we're working on 2.0 and uh, what, this, what this technology means to you. Whew, wow, where should I start? I have created the first plans about Wasabi Wallet in 2015, Christmas Eve. And fast forward three years in 2018, we actually launched the company and released Wasabi Wallet 1.0, which was the Bitcoin wallet that enabled privacy on Bitcoin for the first time for light wallet users. The thing here is that enabling privacy is not the same as as, as being able to use a wallet in just in the same way as any other Bitcoin wallet would be without privacy. We want to have the exact same user experience and, and also we wallet user experience were quite advanced. It was, it was challenging, but in 2020, we started a, a research club Wasabi Research Club in January, and we started reviewing every single Bitcoin privacy research paper up until that point, and often even interviewed the, the, the authors of the research papers. Anyhow, when we've done our research on Bitcoin privacy and figured out how we can do better on the privacy side, we also started to completely rethink the user experience of the wallet. And, and we actually ended up in a very fortunate position here, which, you know, I couldn't even dreamt of that many UI developers are maintainers of our UI framework are working with us, joined to us on this, on this mission for this cause. And, you know, no other software project would even dream of having a single maintainer of a UI framework, let alone two or three or <laughs> many contributors to two maintainers. And they took this task of, of redesigning the complete UI user interface of Wasabi Wallet with the, with the goal of actually showcasing the UI framework that Wasabi is written on, written with, it's called Avalonia. With Wasabi 2.2, we reviewed all the privacy research that there was and created our own privacy research called Wabisabi. We redesigned the user experience and the user interface from the ground up. And we did not only achieve our original goal, which is let's build a privacy experience that is exactly as good as uh, as any other Bitcoin wallet without privacy. But we actually achieved a much larger goal, which was that it actually the single best user experience for a Bitcoin desktop wallet that what Wasabi 2.2 has right now in my humble opinion. So I hope that we can consider Bitcoin's fungibility fixed in a 
very narrow sense and all we will have to do left in the following years is to enable more and more type of users and maybe even businesses to 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 have a fungible bitcoin user experience to to use bitcoin privately and when we are done that then the last thing what we will have to do is fix bitcoin's portability too so then we will have a have quite a ride in the future to 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 try to make make things cheaper and faster possibly with probably with the lightning network right so that's the that's what i i think uh please continue the show <laughs> very nice david do you have any insights of the last couple of years uh what are you excited about yes so we are sitting here as you can see in the budapest headquarter office um basically this was the center of at least the budapest development <laughs> here True. um and uh, a lot of things happens in the last year uh, with the company itself not just with the software different kind of teams formed since we began because uh, more and more developers joined to the group uh, we have a marketing team as well beside us for example one graphical at least no two graphical designer if i can say that just to simplify things so we are improving the software in many other areas as well like is 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 the minimum required to have um a comprehensive software and all of these efforts are forged into 2.0 you will see uh, the graphical interface is completely changed and tailor made to this specific purpose to have a bitcoin wallet the most recent features to send and to receive and by the way meanwhile enabling the privacy uh, by default for the user i think it will be a very interesting journey for the user as well how they will get our user interface the, the design team try to make it as intuitive as possible sometimes this was hard to do because we didn't want to have tool tips there in the software and a lot of texts uh, we said that or the, the motto was whenever you need text to to describe or to elaborate on something that's not intuitive so we again and again trying to find an interface that we think it is intuitively working um, it will turn out if we were right or not <laughs> now so i'm personally but i don't think i'm the only one i'm very curious how they will get this because we were iterating a lot on these kind of uh, on these interfaces as well so that's about the ui the coin join framework the new coin join framework or coin join protocol um, which is called wabi sabi is almost opening a new dimension in the same way as the ui changes in the software for example one of the biggest uh, limitation for one point for vv1 for wasabi wallet one was the 0.1 minimum denomination which was $400 at the at the uh, beginning when we started Wasabi wallet but meanwhile it it worked much more thus uh, not letting many users to use the wallet so one thing was the that what Adam mentioned Opera mentioned before that uh, Wasabi was for poor users because there were many advanced features the coin list cognitively hard to process uh, ui interfaces it was like something like a no go for a normal user but uh, 2.0 tries to tries to go over on this for example we try to avoid having a coin list in the software because the coin list was the biggest challenge as far as i noticed in wasabi 1.0 years so we will try to 
provide a better solution. We will see how it will turn out. I think we did what we could. So <laughs> it, it's, I, I use the wallet confidently, at least during the test. I haven't seen a problem with that. So we can say it's a new, it's a new era. And, uh, and, and we did something like uh, nobody else, if I could say that, but not in the manner that we are the first in this, but we are the first to experiment with this, how to have a wallet, which is a privacy wallet, but not having a coin list inside it. It sounds very good, but uh, I think it, we, were, we were successful, but let the users tell us after the release. So I, I am full with curiosity how this will turn out. We have been working on this for two years, so it's a huge, it's a huge uh, effort from our side. I'm having positive feelings right now, so I hope, I hope it will be very good. Yeah, it will be exciting for sure. There, you know, we kind of shifted the goalpost throughout the 2.0 development era a bit and the the scope of the problem that we were trying to tackle got bigger and bigger and bigger um and to some extent that's that's a bad thing right because you you fellas waited well a long time for a proper release with new features uh, but on the other hand that allowed us to really make a more holistic approach to the big problem that's uh, that's a big step that's a difficult step uh, and i think we we're doing quite well uh, on many fronts but you know as always uh, the more you zoom in uh, there are numerous little problems uh, and things that can be improved uh, and that's for one you know scary because the software isn't perfect uh, uh, however uh, the the great thing is that it still works and it works quite well uh, and we see all these low-hanging fruits that we can improve in the future uh, and that will lead to well even a greater software uh, but what we have now is uh, is really quite something. It's definitely a big improvement to uh, what we had in the past. Uh, and yeah, if, if this is the new status quo, it can only get better from now on. Then I'm having a pretty bullish outlook on the whole situation. Um, so anyone, any other notes before we press that juicy big red button? Just that the, the first release of Wasabi that was done in two years of one person working on it and one year of three other person start four other people started working on that this happened in three years and what's up 2.2 was actually another three years after the initial inception of the 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 idea uh, two years and six months but it was, I think, over 40 people were working on that, and and many, many, many people here never even experienced the Wasabi Wallet release. So that's a, it's an interesting fun. I hope you guys are gonna like it. So there's no other way to find out if people like it, other than to actually ship the code. So how about we do that? David, are you ready? Yes, we are ready. Drum roll. So, David, the stage is yours. All right. OK, so we have this symbolic here. So I can smash the table. Spooky smash the table. I will press the button. And after that, we start the deployment, which will take, I think, a minute. And then the software will be available. So shall I press the button, guys? Yes. Press the button. Smash what? it. Easy win. Explosions. Confetti. Champagne. Sunlight. Let the sunshine in and let Wasabi 2.2 in as well. All right. It's there on GitHub. The website will be refreshed soon as well. We made it, guys. <laughs> Could you imagine? That's it? Yep. Okay. I can not get the website yet. 
Blue screen of death. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, what we need is to order some some playing band to play live music in the background for us while we are waiting. <laughs> come, come. come. <laughs> Thanks. This is exactly what we did. Compatible from bottom to up and from up to down. One shipment. Spotty open the champagne. I <laughs> just... <laughs> All right. Okay, we are we are okay. So um, you just download the software. It will upgrade the existing installation, and that's it. Yes, it should be as straightforward as any other update that you did to Wasabi Wallet. If you're running an old client, uh, you will get a little notification at the bottom status bar saying that a new update is available. Click that link, it'll show you the beautiful new website uh, and there download the package for the, whatever platform you are running. And by the way, Apple M1 Silicon is natively supported. So if you have that, get that dedicated package. Uh, and well, you install it and all your existing wallets will continue to work just as fine. Um, and they, uh, there's no need to import, again, if you were using Wasabi before, uh, the, the import should be rather quick, uh, and then you can use Wasabi 2.0 with your existing wallet. Of course, alternatively, create a new wallet, uh, make sure you've got your backup recovery words, uh, and then receive some Bitcoin into that wallet, uh, and press play in the AutoCoin join. Uh, it'll ask you what type of mode you want. If you prefer to optimize for privacy, for cost, or for speed, uh, you just check uh, out whichever is the right one for you. And that's basically it. You wait a couple hours, and then you can spend your Bitcoin privately by default. Hopefully a couple of hours, right? But what if is there any way that we are not going to make coin joins in the next couple of hours? Would that be possible? Sure. I mean, for one, the biggest question is, uh, are, are users going to download the software? Uh, and well, hopefully they are. Uh, and if yes, then hopefully they, they uh, send Bitcoin into their wallets. And then hopefully they press play in the AltoCoin join. Uh, and if all these things check out, then we should have at least sufficient user base to have hopefully quite large coin joins. Uh, then the next big question is, will the server and the client software hold up the stress test of potentially hundreds of users coming online. Uh, and will we you know, not have some uh, basically denial of servers? Uh, that, that might be one possibility, uh, just too many users. <laughs> I guess that would be a good problem to have. And then uh, it gets into optimizing the code. Um, uh, but we will see. Uh, but I'm confident that we'll see something nice on mainnet quite soon. Is someone watching the backend logs to see if there's any uh, successful coin join coordination going on? Maybe someone has a counter of the current uh, registered input number. We can take a look at it, yes. Adam, can you check the log on the backend? Mm -hmm. I think we won't have an exact counter there. And uh, like the input registration timeout is one hour by minimum. So 150. One other thing is we have the stats.wasabiwallet.io, which shows you the current download numbers of our GitHub packages. Um, uh, but I checked just now, and unfortunately, there is nothing on the uh, the 2.0 release yet. So I'm guessing we might have to wait have to wait a bit before that is registered and indexed. The first data will be on the midnight. But Max, there are other sites those where you can check the download. It's just not that fancy what we have. Let me check that for you. 20, 20 downloads. OK. So let's maybe talk a bit about uh, the, the features of this new CoinJoin protocol that we have. Rave, uh, could you maybe give a short summary uh, of all the features uh, that are specific to the CoinJoin? Mm, I don't know. It's really hard to try to even think of all of them. But I think like the, the biggest thing is that we have not we don't have that kind of minimum denomination anymore that we have in 1.0 so people with less than 0.1 bitcoin are actually able to reclaim their privacy now and even the people with much larger amount than 0.1 are able to do it much more efficiently with 2.0 uh, overall like yeah 
the whole coin join protocol is completely different. Input 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 links or input output links or output output links. Yeah. Um, overall, like I think we still have a lot of work to do, but this is a very very nice first release, and it should be like a big big improvement for Bitcoin privacy in general. Yeah, you guys might want to dive deeper into those. Yeah. So again, the minimum denomination now is five thousand cents, uh, plus whatever the mining fee is. Uh, which is quite nice. So that means uh, you can uh, make s small value private payments uh, easily uh, and then uh, coin join the change uh, or uh, make sure that you uh, will just have a few coins that are exactly the size that you need them. Uh, there's no longer the need that every user has a 0 0.1 coin, at least. Uh, there's now much, much more uh, possibilities of which denominations you can choose in a certain round uh, and a lot of randomness of, uh, for example, how many inputs are you going to select or how many outputs are you going to select. Uh, and, and all of this, of course, works uh, nicely by default uh, with our auto coin join robot, uh, that self-driving car uh, that hopefully is not going to make many crashes. But that means that a lot of the advanced decisions now happen under the hood, uh, which is quite nice. Mm -hmm. And I think the analogy of self-driving car is actually pretty fitting in here. It's a very interesting technology and you only like there's only a certain limit that you can test a self-driving car in a test environment. At some point, you just have to put it into an actual street and hope that there's, well, not many casualties. I think it's a very like interesting technology and I think it's the future. But, you know, these first steps, these are going to be very interesting and this is like you know making history maybe jumar can you give some more insights in the ui what are some of the cool new features that you implemented hey guys so yeah um compared to 1.0 i mean aesthetically um speaking you know it looks a, a bit more a bit more better um the wallet selection as well is um uh, much better <laughs> uh, and um we are using a coherent um, design language across the app now. So uh, I think that will also help in the user experience as well. And we've rounded corners now. <laughs> it looks very slick. Oh, yes. Um, using a, a gratuit gratuitous amount of um, blur behind um, rounded corners, you know, just to have that um, modern look across all platforms that we support. One of the other cool small UI changes are things like small animations, uh, which seem to be much smoother. Uh, so maybe, Jumar, how, how, how does Avalonia handle these animations? Why, why does it look so good? We are building at the, um, the foundations we have laid years ago for animations, you know. In upcoming Avalonia release also, uh, that will um, get better. Uh, with um, better um, APIs, uh, render threads, um, animations, and stuff. And also, um, we also uh, base some animations from Microsoft's uh, um, design, you know? So we had that um, um, a bit more professional touch now than we had in 1.0. And yeah, it's really, well, I'm, I'm not sure if it's really great if we get more and more like Microsoft, <laughs> but probably it is. Uh, their design is quite nice. Um, and definitely what, what is in Wasabi looks awesome. When it comes to design, I mean, the top tech firms really has it on the game, you know. <laughs> uh, it doesn't get much better than that, sadly. <laughs> well, until now, because Wasabi, Wasabi, uh, Wasabi 2.0 overtops them all. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> Lucas, maybe you can give a quick update. What were you tinkering on? What are you excited about in this release? Um, I'm, I'm interested on seeing how it works in in under stress that's something that it's it's what i want to to see basically i'm excited about the the technical part i, I would like to see a a huge transaction I, I mean we have been testing and we know it it can work with you know 100 inputs and it can generate hundreds of outputs but um i think it can do much better than that, and uh, we need more users. I mean, more users participating. We need people to migrate from Wasabi Wallet One. I mean, to the Zero Link protocol to the Wasabi Sabi protocol, and, and well, that will be will be something really cool to see. Yeah, definitely. What are your bets that the 
because backend server is gonna run too hot with all the fancy crypto that's going on. Mm, I don't think so. In fact, even even in the even in the worst, uh, because basically, even the remix is is free. Let's say it, you don't pay for remixes. So in terms of input cryptography, uh, is that you or of the protocol in general, is that you register each input under a separate Tor identity um, and uh, with just a single input. Right? And if you want to register multiple inputs, you create a new Tor identity and register it with the coordinator there. Thanks to the new arbitrary amount eCash system that we're using in Wabi Sabi, uh, this is no longer an issue that makes it possible in the cryptographic layer and on the Tor protocol layer. And then we have a, a Poisson distribution of the timing of when you register an output uh, sorry, in input. Well, it's kind of the same for outputs too. And, um, so uh, there, there is randomness in the timing as well. Um, and then in terms of which inputs are going to be selected, uh, a couple checks uh, in terms of what anon score do the inputs have uh, and which amounts do they have. Uh, and especially, um, so when we choose a group of possible or potential inputs, we check how many of these inputs come from the same previous transaction, um, which of course reveals, at least to some extent, uh, a common ownership input or input ownership. And assuming that this is quite a large number, um, it will become more and more difficult to find out which of any given inputs actually belong to the same user. Um, and so here, of course, assuming there is natural anonymity set in terms of real users, um, this calculation gets more difficult. The exact extent of how difficult it is to find the input clusters now is yeah, difficult to say, but uh, I believe it's quite all right. The how is that being measured? Um, I, I was thinking maybe Aviv should actually reply to this, this concern because he's actually, I'm, I'm somewhere on the middle, but he's actually in a complete opposite uh, Coming, coming, get it from a complete opposite way. So, so that should be interesting. What he has to say about this I was researching it. If, if it's okay, I'll, uh, I'll I'll get back to my apartment in five minutes and uh, I'll address the question then. So, I, I guess I just give the the short version of it of how I think about it is that with Wasabi 2.0 in the beginning, we were we, we were trying to find an amount composition scoring system in a way that we can actually somehow work with number of subsets, um, trying to maximize subsets of the, of the coin join, or even better, trying to minimize the probability links between input inputs, any specific input and any specific output, and any specific output and any specific input. At the beginning, we were trying to, to go into this direction because obviously this is the most complete solution that you can have for the amount organization program. And we did not actually, well, I wouldn't, some people think that we did find solutions to that, but we were not convinced that those things are work and they were very risky. So what we defaulted back to is equal outputs and what it results in it still creates a bunch of subsets but if we see an equal output then we can be at least sure that hey, there is ambiguity there even if there are changes in the transaction or, or more like unequal outputs these are not changes anymore even unequal outputs cannot be followed back but we are less sure about that. Therefore, it is not included in our anonymity calculations. We only care about equal outputs. So this, this would be my, my short version, <laughs> short version of it. And, an, and another thing to consider is we, since we have standard denominations across multiple rounds now, uh, that means that it often happens that on the input side, users by random chance select inputs that have equal amounts than other users. Uh, and this is kind of a mixing on the input side. It's not really designed or, or optimized for this. It just happens as a uh, side product, uh, but that definitely increases input side privacy as well. Again, but to, you know, to measure and express that exactly, I guess a bit tough. 
One, and another thing to consider is when, when we consolidate inputs uh, in a coin join, um, then we take the weighted average for the anonymity score. Um, so let's say you, to, you have a, a large value coin with 10 anon score and then a low value coin with three anon score, for example, then your average weighted anon score would be higher uh, um, because the large value coin has more anon score. And then this would be then the base set where the output side anon score gets added to, which then depends on the number of equal amount outputs. Maybe by now, Aviv is in the house. No, guys, I'm, I'm two more minutes away. I apologize. <laughs> no worries at all. We can do a different okay. question and then, and then we'll come back to it as well. Yeah, I was actually yeah. trying to give a question to Max uh, before we come back to it. Well, since then, brought up that you become the CEO of Wasabi Wallet or ZK Snacks. This current stream is the first time you are actually appearing as the CEO of ZK Snacks. So how does that make you feel? <laughs> yeah, quite. I'm quite excited about it, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I love Wasabi as a software project, I always have. Uh, and it's its mission and vision behind it. Uh, and I've been a user of the client for a long time. And based on that, I'm an enthusiast contributor to the project. Uh, and now being on the user side of the back end, uh, I, I guess I can lift that ethos and, and double down on it. And I will try to give good feedback to the software project uh, in terms of uh, back end functionality. And yeah, we'll, we'll hope that CK Snacks uh, as a company will continue to not just provide incredibly valuable services to its users uh, and but also to uh, continue its well i guess philanthropic uh, contributions to the free and open source software space uh, i think we're already doing some quite amazing work there but uh, we can do much more uh, so i'm hoping that ck snacks will be yeah, more more involved in in other software projects uh, and, and that uh, Wasabi will continues to be resilient and, and feature rich and uh, just working well. Um, but to a large extent, you know, it's it's business as usual. I loved the project before. I love it as much or more now. Uh, and I'll just try my best to build something that's useful. Uh, and I think we have one of the best teams to make that happen, even though it's a incredibly ambitious and difficult problem to tackle. Uh, so I'm definitely not too confident, <laughs> but I'm, I'm hopeful and optimistic. Can you maybe give an account of yourself? Who are you? How did you get to study? Where were you before? And, and what did you hear? So a bit of a history lesson, please. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm mainly, I would say, an entrepreneur and economist uh, by trade before Bitcoin. Uh, it was always important for me to earn, a mo earn money, first and foremost, right? Uh, but then coincidentally, you realize that, oh, that means you got to be useful for other people. Uh, and that was always something that I found quite enjoyable. I then discovered economics as, well, the, the science to um, become a better problem solver and entrepreneur. Uh, and thereafter, first trying out the Keynesian mainstream nonsense. I thankfully discovered the Austrian School of Economics, uh, and uh, that helped me a lot with understanding the, the role and the tasks of, of entrepreneurs and the importance of money. And so then after studying this, I learned about the problems that the fiat money has, and I was eager to find a solution to it. And that led me to Bitcoin ultimately, uh, as a money that is defined, verified, and, and enforced by the merchants that use the money system. And that's such a genius idea that solves so many problems. Uh, and it, the software is so elegantly designed uh, that it's caught my attention quite quick. And the fall down the Bitcoin rabbit hole was, was steep <laughs> and, and, and harsh, um, but I've enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, and then Wasabi Wallet, uh, I discovered back when it was Hidden Wallet, I believe end of 2017, uh, based on Nopara being part of the Block Digest, a phenomenal podcast. Uh, there he was talking about the development process, and I thought to try it out. Um, yeah, love the love the idea. Uh, so stuck around and figured out that it's pretty bad, <laughs> uh, despite how cool it is. Um, and there were like a thousand and one things to to improve. 
that were so obvious. Uh, so I stuck around, had conversations with the other contributors and uh, did some educational videos of how to use it. Uh, eventually answered a bunch of questions from other users, then got lazy doing that. Uh, so I wrote the documentation that I don't have to repeat myself that much. <laughs> uh, and a bunch of others helped out with making that happen. Yeah, then got more into, let's say, the technical side, you know, reviewing a lot of the pull requests, testing the software, giving the feedback, um, what's broken, what could be better. Uh, and then as well, the, the research side, you know, really thinking deep about the architecture and, and the design of the software, about the different tricks that can be used to make it more private, efficient, uh, useful. Yeah, I guess all of that let let me here to this point now um where i'm kind of just planning to continue doing what i do uh, and double down on this well, open source ethos of scratchy own edge you know we're building software tools that anyone else can use when we make it better it's better for everyone else that's such a massive improvement in all well, resource allocation and, and and wealth that we're creating here so uh yeah i'm i'm in it for the mission and don't plan on stopping anytime soon. All right, thank you. Let's get back to Aviv then. So what are your thoughts on input input links? Uh, bef before I get there, uh, so firstly, a big congratulations to uh, to Max. Um, I, I, I can only imagine how um, how uh, a big of a dream this, this is uh, for you because I, I know Max has always been incredibly passionate about this project. Um, for, for uh, almost since the beginning, although technically the beginning was in 2013 or even 2015, but um, he's been in this for for uh, a very very long time. The second thing is is that I just wanted to get to Dan to maybe articulate m more of his concerns. Uh, you you kind of mentioned a couple of things about timing attack coordinator, and I just wanted you to kind of elaborate on on precisely the the attack that you're concerned about. So like if I make a payment. How do, how do I make a payment through with Wasabi without making a link to my past history? My concern is if I make two payments, unrelated identities, and then later change from those payments gets coin joined, the change from those two payments is still related in the coin join that they're both input to, that both the change transactions are input to, linking them, even though the input and the output are not linked. Yeah, absolutely. That, uh, that, that that's a great uh, question there. So there will be instances where you do have a wallet with just two change payments, and it may it may be the case that the wallet chooses to select both of those inputs to mix. In, in other situations, you can imagine where the wallet might have a lot of partially mixed coins or fully mixed coins. And I've already spoken about this, and I think in the future we'll want to have a, a system where we 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 combine inputs of already mixed coins with those change coins but the 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 bigger question that you're probably asking is what is the linkability like i guess you know mathematically that um, I, I mean if if the two appear in the same coin joins there's there's inevitably a link in that they both appear in that coin join um so you know there's no way to get rid of that that's entirely. not entirely true though like there's a link in that they're both in the same coin join but the probability that two related inputs could go to any outputs is not necessarily the same across all all inputs and it's possible that only one sub transaction fulfills a certain subset of outputs and then you still have a you don't have a deterministic link between inputs and outputs but you still have input input links i i don't see that mitigated it's a concern of mine not just for train change coins but for any inputs i'm wondering how that's being mitigated well um yes. Uh, just as one small note that once you make a payment, the change output has a one anon score. Right? And uh, the input selector prefers uh, to have a low count of consolidation of one anon score. I'm not exactly sure about the details of that algorithm, uh, but we already tried to reduce uh, the consolidation of one anon score coins. But say you even so merge a one anon score there. coin with a coin join output. There could be a, you could make a deterministic link between those two on the input side. I'm not like, is, is. So, so let, let's just, just. You're not trying to merge the two in the same input? So there, there are several questions here. One question is, if you have two inputs that are from two, um, you know, transactions where you, um, 
you, uh, you, you have two change amounts and they both have some link to your identity and now you want to mix them and they're mixed together. Do those two inputs have a link? You know, again, you can, you can, uh, you know, I, I would say that for, for large transactions, the kind that we kind of expect, the link is, is very modest. And we've looked at, at, at the numbers, you know, for any amount, any, arb, any, it doesn't matter what amount of, of Bitcoin that you have on the left hand side, there's, you know, typically thousands of ways that it could be represented as a, a valid amount on the right hand side in the form of five, six, seven, you know, eight outputs. If, if you have, you know, our expectation is something like two to 300 inputs and two to 300 outputs per coin join. You know, even if you could hypothetically break down all the valid sub transactions, which we don't, we don't think is, is, is feasible, you know, barring some, you know, crazy, uh, you know, someone being, um, you know, half the clients or, or, or a majority of the clients. Um, Why don't you think that's feasible? To, to break down the sub the valid sub transactions in a 200 input 200 output coin join yeah it's just the the the, the time that it would take is, is, is immense computationally too hard is the assumption and, and and it's in particular because we have like you know so many denominations and and that users only choose you know specific denominations it might it might have been a different thing if we said you know users are just deciding their own denominations and they're not cooperating and then there could be some link but again every user regardless of the amount of bitcoin they have will have thousands of ways to represent their particular amount of bitcoin whether it's one input or 10 inputs which is the limit up to 10 inputs they'll have thousands of ways to represent that as outputs and so, so and that's for every the user coordinator side where there's like as a minimum threshold of thousands uh no so it's 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 uh we we know based on the amount of bitcoin they have so this this number goes radically down if the amount is really really small so if someone shows up with fifty thousand satoshis then yes there's n almost no ways they could they could represent that on the output side but the moment you hit more than like i think it's like 10 millibitcoins or you know 50 millibitcoins a very small and reasonable amount then the number quickly grows and then it, it starts to de de decay as as you go past like like one one bitcoin amounts um d d depending on and again this also depends on on the users and and how large their coins are but yes uh we've we've looked at this and there are in fact thousands of ways to represent uh your input like 99 percent of input amounts uh, as uh in eight coins you know five six seven or eight coins on the right hand side yeah, my question my question isn't asking about the right hand side my question is about the probability that one input is related to another input. so so let's walk through that right so how would you uh so the way that you would um you would figure out that input you know seven and input 12 are linked is that you take all the inputs and you take all the outputs and you break it down into sub-transactions, valid sub-transactions, right? And you say, I've noticed that input 7 and input 15 or whatever I just said, I already forgot, are always together, right? That's how you find out that input 7 and input 15 are linked, is that they're always together when we break it into sub-transactions. But I'm telling you that, um, and, and this goes in the reverse order as well, right? You could have eight inputs. So... So you can't exclude that from the table as well. And you know, I've been I've been saying this in, in the research clubs that you know it's critical that we have coin joins where individuals have you know more than eight inputs and and ideally eight outputs as well. Precisely for this reason, you're going to have a lot of you're going to have a lot more than one way to represent uh, input seven and input fifteen. You know, you're going to have sub transactions where they're separate. You're going to have the sub transactions where they're they're uh, with other coins entirely. Um, you're, you're not. It's not going to be completely without a link. We 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 know that you know everything is linked to everything there's some with, with 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 exceptions almost any coin could be associated with any other coin in, in to some degree when when the coin join is large enough because there are just so many coins to choose from and there's so many ways you could const construct uh, but this is what i think about so if you want to if you want to talk more about this I, I would love to have you join the wasabi research club or just just uh, you know schedule time and we can we can talk uh, about this um is is that the uh, only concern because that, that doesn't sound like the the coordinator uh concern I'm still not sure how it's addressed. Is there some like minimum set? Is there a minimum number of participants for the coin join you enforce, or is it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Can oh, I sorry. Do, do, Can I give it a try and you guys uh, fix it if I say something wrong? Sure. Okay. So we either have a coin join round going through every hour, or when there's 150 inputs. I think currently it's not every hour, so. 
the minimum is 150 inputs that we're targeting. Uh, let's say, let's assume that. So if you have 150 inputs, even if two, two of them are yours, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to be able to link them, those two together in like any reasonable probability. And How unlikely probability? It, it varies. It, it varies. It, yeah, it depends. On, on the situation. Okay, so it, is there a minimum threshold? That's what I'm asking. Like, so is technically, there at all, or is it just, I should trust you? Technically, the server has a maximum number of inputs, which uh, triggers around all the time. So as soon as we hit the maximum number, the coin jam round gets triggered. Right? Or if we hit the one hour mark, that's the timeout hard constraint. Right? That's kind of similar to how we had it in 1.0. Either 100 users, the hard limit, upper limit, or the one hour timeout. Right? Just now the coordinator no longer knows the number of users because he doesn't know input input linkage. And therefore, it's numbers of inputs, which is currently at 300. And we have a minimum impact, a minimum input count multiplier, I guess, in the in the configuration, and that is currently on mainnet set to 0 0.5. So we, that means we have 300 maximum, and the minimum is 50% of that, meaning 150. So if after one hour, still there are not 150 coin joins uh, inputs registered to the current round of coin join then this will fail and we start another input registration for another hour, I believe. Yeah, and a few things to note over here. We have whale pools. So if you have a really big amount, you're going to probably wait a few rounds. So you're not, you, you actually like mix with the other big whales. So that's one thing. Then the other thing is that you're choosing between one to eight inputs into your coin join. So it's very, like one even if... Oh, yeah, yeah, one to 10. So even if you know that, you know, these two inputs belong together for some weird reason, you still wouldn't be able to, you know, uh, like that's, let's say you get to change outputs from me uh, and you put these two into coin join round. I still don't know if you have registered even more inputs in there. And also if you have a change output, it probably has the annual score one. So you're probably not consolidating these two coins together at this point, but you're actually like decomposing them. But either way, it's it's very, very unlikely that you're gonna figure out uh, these links. Uh, D Dan, um, so I, I I love your your skepticism because this this is how I uh, uh, approach things, and and thank you for once again uh, letting a meeting that, that I'm a part of be hijacked into a Wasabi Research Club. That's kind of yes. my my goal Good. here. Every meeting is a Wasabi Research Club <laughs> when when I'm in, in the meeting. But um, so one one solution is that you don't perform coin joins with uh with coins with an onset one with more than one coin. Um, uh, uh, and an even better thing would be you perform uh, them with maybe one coin that's that's your change coin, and then if you have any already mixed coins or almost mixed coins, you can you can begin mixing that coin with those coins as well, um, because those coins are unlinked. You know, in, inputs are not linked by the coordinator because of uh, of the Wabi Sabi protocol, and so now it becomes even harder um, because now when someone's is following your change amount. Right, they're not going to be able to reasonably know where that money went in on the right-hand side because you've paired a bunch of more anonymous coins on the left-hand side with the, the 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 change. So would that be um, one one solution? I I understand more now. I'm I'm still I'm going to have to read. I suppose I'm. Yeah, I mean, it's not easy. Was, <laughs> the solution I just told is I was just told is don't coin join with a onset one coins, but that's where everyone starts. So no, uh, no, no. Uh, sorry, what, what I'm saying is that this is the surefire hundred percent solution, whereas normally it would still, you know, be not very linkable. We just cannot tell you exactly the number, and and there are edge cases where those two coins could have a very strong link, like ninety five percent or even a hundred percent. I, I, like uh, I'm, I'm not saying it's broken if 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 you don't do this method. It's just it, it, it it's about how extreme you want to go in terms of, um, in terms of like the certainty. And uh, just to clarify, Aviv was speaking about uh, prefer not to consolidate more than one coin with one anon score when you register your inputs for a coin join. Uh, and again, this check is happening. I'm not sure exactly again about the details, but another observation here is that if we have a kind of deterministic protocol of things like input or output uh, selection, uh, then this somewhat decreases the ambiguity of the round, right? For example, if the adversary knows that any client 
always only registers a, a single one and on score change coin. If, if that's how the client behaves all the time, 100% of the time, then if the adversary looks at a coin join and he sees a single uh, non-standard change input, uh, then uh, he will know that this is the only non-standard change input of this user's input cluster, right? because the client never selects more than one uh, like that. And, and so he, this decreases the ambiguity of what's the input group of any of that particular user. And then that's why in general, uh, I believe it makes sense to have some randomness here, right? So that you, you don't say you always only pick only one Anon score coin, but you know, sometimes occasionally even pick two or three. Uh, and this all in all, I think increases the ambiguity because now an outside observer who only sees the input and output list of that coin join has a much harder time to try to fingerprint what is the behavior of, of one given user. Mm -hmm. I agree. Let me, let me summarize this, which is how I think about it. I, I wrote an article called Privacy Guarantees of Wasabi Wallet 2.0. Then I ask the question, what are the privacy guarantees? Firstly, there is a computational hardness in the anonymizing Wasabi wallet, but probably that computational hardness as quantum computers improve or whatever happens in a hundred year is going to be broken. But there is a second line of defense, which is the, the, the subset number of subset transactions and more importantly, the input, input and output, and output and output. So there are privacy, hard privacy guarantees there. But what's the problem with that? Well, the problem with that is that we don't know exactly what a specific case of, of coin join resulted in. And finally, this is why we are going, doing equal output, because that's the third line of defense. Equal outputs, which by the way, was a at 1.2. That was the only line of defense, right? The third line of defense is the equal outputs, right? So that is being proven to work in Wasabi at 1.2. But again, there are those other two things, which I know, uh, you guys find the second one very, very, uh, exciting. And I guess that's it. I'll give you back the word, Max. Thanks for your summary, Adam. If I can just add one more thing, there's like 15 additional problems that uh, we, we've been looking at and discussing. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm personally very open to, to hearing those problems and like thinking about them. I'm not sure how familiar you are with those other problems uh, and if you've been sort of following the, the Wasabi Research Club, but I, I really encourage you to um, to kind of be, you know, be, be a part of that conversation so we can uh, we can make progress. Yeah, definitely. Again, this is a really, really difficult problem. What we have is, I think, well thought through and quite all right. <laughs> but again, it's definitely not perfect. There's rooms of improvements a lot. Uh, and yeah, getting feedback on things like this is very important. So much appreciated, Dan. Yeah, overall, this is a very good question. And uh, like you saw now, it's not really easy to explain this. So we still have a lot of work to do on making that more efficient. Anything else, Dan? Any other feedback? The other thing I heard that got brought up was that you can modify the client not to pay any fee. That's not enforced. Is that actually the case? I hate to ask a yes, no question, but that's, uh, that one, that one stuck out to me. Yeah, that was no about it, but it did not end up being the case. The answer is, is no, basically. Um, basically. but if it, it, yes, no, you cannot. I, I know what you mean is Basically, what you can do if you don't want to pay uh, coordination fees, uh, split your coins under the uh, what we call the uh, pleb the threshold, right? So you can, if you participate with very small coins, you are not going to pay. Of course, you are going to pay more in 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 network fees because it, you will need more participate in more rounds with more coins in order to achieve the same level of privacy, right? Uh, so you can you can do that. That is what um, nothing much was um, talking about. In, in fact, he, he clarified that in, in, a, in, a, in a tweet. Uh, but I would like to 
if that is okay, I, I would like to answer your previous yeah. your previous question, if if it is good, because basically, it is basically how to guarantee if you want that inputs to input links are not let's say easy to to see right or to to, to discover or to analyze or to... first of all <clears throat> uh, we have to in order to see how good wasabi wallet 2 is we can compare it with the other um, um coin join protocols for example if you have for example um the samurai wallet well in samurai wallet you have to reveal your wallet your coins in a transaction zero or initial transaction so so everybody that can read the blockchain or can use a, a blockchain explorer can see those inputs right something similar but 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 better happens with um joint market because in joint market one input belongs to one of the the maker or the taker right if it is the first first round Right, so you know the, the input that comes from a previous joint market coin join is the taker, right? And and the new money is the is the maker, right? So you you can know sometimes the common ownership of the inputs. In Wasabi Wallet One, only the coordinator can know that because all the inputs goes together in one single HTTP request to the coordinator. So the coordinator can know that. But nobody else can. In Wasabi Wallet 2, no one can know that. Even the coordinator doesn't know that, right? Because all the inputs are registered with a, a different identity. So basically, in, in, in that specific area, Wasabi Wallet 2 or Wabisabi, the protocol, is the best of the best of the best of the protocols, right? The, the thing is that, uh, of course, we want more and better and better and better and better technology. So that's why we are asking these questions. But in terms of that, there is nothing like uh, uh, Wabi Sabi protocol. Then we can discuss if you want, uh, if those links can be analyzed once they are uh, available on the blockchain. Well, it's another discussion that, of course, the answer is, is not. Because that is basically the service that we are providing, right? The linking or the coupling inputs and outputs. Basically, that is our business. Well, that's that's my concern. Is I I don't believe that's true right now. The input input links. The claim that the input input links could only be identified by the coordinator in the past and now can't because they're registered across different requests is just not the case. Given either, as Aviv was saying, sufficient computation across a whole coin join to find all of the possibilities or if you were to uh, if you were to make that comp computation more efficient in a targeted attack if you had some idea that perhaps two or three inputs were most likely to be related and then you started looking for all the possibilities only regarding those on chain I I'm not well it's not clear yes, to me what I, the guarantee is that the those links won't it, be made aren't well, there in, in, I'm not sure that they're not any less dangerous than input output links, because if I made a payment with uh, one coin and then I made a different payment with something that I got from an exchange, maybe I made a donation to Navalny's team in the US and no value judgment on whether that's good or not. The Putin regime wouldn't like that if they saw that related to KYC account, they'd be able to identify that transaction with me if they could make the link like these kind of dangers are are my concern and shipping this software uh, and i understand that we're all striving for progress and there's no perfect solution that exists yet but i have to voice these concerns because there are real visceral human dangers that we're trying to prevent yes but <clears throat> the thing is basically right if you can know once in the blockchain that two inputs are related the only the only way you can know that is basically analyzing the the, the coin joint transaction right and finding all the possible the compositions you don't need to find all of them for the whole transaction you just need to find no. all of them related to that to those the inputs you're interested in you you, you actually would need to find yes 
if you wanted to if you wanted to solidify that those two inputs are linked, you would need to find all. If you wanted to get a good approximation of where the outputs are going, then you're correct. You can just target s several inputs and assume that they're from the same person, assume that there are no additional inputs, and say, okay, these inputs here with some margin of error, what are the likely outputs? And you will get a much reduced set of outputs. And there, equal outputs will defend the user as well as different interpretations of the uh, of, uh, of the outputs. But no, if, if you think two inputs are together, you still need all combinations of inputs and outputs and the subset sum problem to... to to say with confidence, yes, they are in fact, uh, you know, co com combined. There's, there's no all way around that. Involving those inputs and outputs, not all of the ones where they're together, but just involving them. If they're totally I, they're okay. involving something else. The, then no. what you have, then what you have, when you get all of those involving those two, is you have uh, likely outputs that are linked to those two inputs if those two inputs are linked. It's not you're you're not getting the the fact that those two inputs are linked. Like there is no targeted attack on two specific inputs to get the link uh, um, between them, them themselves. Wasabi has more exactly. than three downloads. You, That's awesome. Exactly. You, once once you find all the possible decompositions in which those inputs right participate, you can say, for example, okay, I found let's say one thousand. 100 if you want okay I, I found 100 possible sub transactions but it, it is because you start from the from assuming the inputs right because you you say okay because first you have to assume the inputs but that is completely fake and even if you say okay i want to see how many sub transactions are possible with these inputs so in in, the, in that case you are assuming the input you will find a lot of some transactions so you have to also assume the output. And if you assume the input and you assume the output, then it is a very, very, very extremely biased analysis. In fact, it's not an analysis. It's, that, it's something that you, you try to justify your interpretation, let's say, but there are that's many- the job of the prosecution, though. That's, that's what so, we are trying to get people in trouble to do. Awesome. So let me uh, let, let me just um, kind of m maybe summarize things. Um, every person that's done the sort of more research side of Wasabi has come to the conclusions that there's a lot of problems and that there are a lot of dangers, a lot of edge cases, uh, a lot of concerns. Uh, the best example is Yuval. Yuval, uh, you know, was extremely concerned about about things. Uh, and then I showed up a few months ago, uh, uh, or a month and a half ago, to to look at stuff. And then I I showed concerns. So uh, I, I I think it's not that I'm telling you that everything is without concerns. It's the opposite. Uh, we, we, there's a, there's a lot of St stuff to do and and yes you know like you know wasabi could go out and give these like long caveats like you know if you do this and then you do this and then this happens and then your particular concern is this then this is what you should be worried about and you should know this on the other hand there is the fact that like what wallets do people have as options when it comes to privacy preserving wallets what what, what wallet would be like number two you know there really isn't a lot to, to to go for especially for like people who aren't extremely tech oriented and can like manage all their things and have like a really in-depth stuff there's just this unhappy i guess medium where we just accept that there's there's like serious problems we we, we live with them and we think about them and 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 and, uh, and and what you're saying where like it's dangerous to ship this product you, you're right it's dangerous to ship this product it's also dangerous not to ship this product right so you know w what would you do uh i mean delay it more like i've i've been delaying i've been begging people to delay the project Sorry, Aviv, Aviv, but 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 I, I think that is not the the, the, the way to, to to go. I mean, the, we have to to answer the question, right? And, and, and I'm not now. I don't. I don't know if I really, really, really understand the question. That 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 would be the, the first thing to, to clarify because I I need to understand this in order to answer, right? So let me ask questions, right? To to understand the question. What is the difference? I mean, what? Why is in this specific topic? Why would be uh, Wabi Sabi uh, different than uh, Zero Link or the, the the version one of Wasabi? So why do you think that in this case input can be uh, linked 
by an external uh, observer, and, uh, and that was not possible in, in, in the previous version. What, what changed in this regard? I'm not asking about any change. I'm asking about the security of the product that's being released. Yeah. I don't think there's any perfect solution that exists right now. No, no, a concern but, but, but I mean, you have a concern, and I, I want to address your concern. Right? So I need to understand the question. What, that, what, that's is, what Lucas wants to know is, is your specific concern is that two inputs could be linked because there's nothing that inherently protects them when they both register in a coin join, right? Two change in uh, outputs are now inputs in a coin join. You're concerned that they're linked together. That, that's the concern. Yeah, my concern okay. is that because it's Knapsack, could, is this mitigated in... in the Wasabi 2 or not yet? And it sounds like under some circumstances, if you do some analysis, it could be, but it's not clear. Well, just to be clear, Lucas is very right about this. The analysis you need to do is the total breakdown of a coin join, which, you know, I, once you get past like 120 inputs and 120 outputs, you now need special hardware because for regular hardware, it, it will take you days to, to do this. So once you get to you know 200 inputs, 200 outputs, it's it's an it's exponentially exponential when when, when you look at the problem. Um, so it's you know and, and all that gives you is the total breakdown, um, which which again I personally don't think it's 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 very plausible for more than 100 and you know 60 inputs, 160 outputs. Um, but but that's just my you know so so but you would need to do that. To, 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 to get the, the the link between those inputs and and it wouldn't tell you those inputs are perfectly linked most of the time it would say that there's there's a probabilistic link all inputs and all outputs are linked to other inputs and outputs by, by some probability just just to add this first of all it is true that it is really 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 hard to find all the sub transactions because it is it, it grows the difficulty grows exponentially but that is not uh, the uh, the what guarantees that it is hard. If you, for example, analyze much, much smaller transaction, right? You try to find all the possible decomposition for a four input and four output transaction, you will find that there are a lot if you use a standard uh, denominations, right? Basically, the thing is that after you found, after you find all the possible sub-transactions, all the, that are at the order of I don't know. I, I should do the, the the numbers again. I don't remember, but it have be billions, right? Okay. Now you have to filter, right, those um, sub transactions that are using coin that you are interested on, right? Then you have all the possible sub transactions in which that specific coin can participate, and you can see all the, those sub sub transactions contains multiple inputs. So probabilistically, you say, okay, there are, there are, this coin can be probabilistically uh, linked to this input, to this input, to this input, to this input, right? What the chances? Well, are very, very, very small because the number of subtransactions are huge. But to simplify, to simplify this explanation, because it sounds like, I mean, it, it is objectively true, but to make it even more simple, Right? It is exactly the same that you have to do mm, to uh, know the links in Wasabi Wallet 1. It's exactly, exactly the same. Right? What is the difference? Well, in Wasabi Wallet 1, you know that the, uh, a user can participate with up to seven coins. So you can, let's say, um, narrow the, the scope of your, your analysis to find all the possible sub-transactions that have no more than seven coins, right? So you can you you can say, okay, these are the, all the sub transactions that contains more than seven coins are not possible in Wasabi Wallet One. So you can you, you the result of your analysis is better, right? In Wasabi Wallet Two, that is not possible. You don't know if the user is participating with one coin, three coins, seven coins, or fifty coins, right? So you have to take all the possibilities into account are really, really, really in the order of billions and billions, you know? So how probably is to link inputs? I think that is not what Juval was talking about. What Juval was talking about is what if the coordinator can perform some kind of something? That is what I think. But on the blockchain is 
it's not so easy. Okay, thanks for answering, guys. Well, has anyone else any questions? Well, I guess while we are waiting for the for the questions in the live chat, maybe Max, you could continue asking the people around here about what were their experiences. That was, I think, pretty cool. In fact, <laughs> let me let me ask Jose if you are here because I think you are the you are the newest. <laughs> You're the newest person here, the newest developer in Slavia. Right? So, what was your impression of the team and, and everything that's going on here so far? Well, uh, <laughs> it's a it's a wonderful environment. Uh, to be honest, I haven't had uh, such a soft landing in my developer life. So, I'm very 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 happy to be part of your project. And in fact, I'm very happy because uh, one of the features uh, uh, Wasabi 2.0 has is the search bar, as you may already know. And it's a, an interesting feature. I'm very happy with it. It fulfilled me with happiness uh, to see the feature in the release. So I can be happier <laughs> to see that included as, as part of the release. Uh, moreover, I'm very happy to be uh, around with such a wonderful people. So young, because I'm a, an, old, an old one, I'm already 41, and it's, it's, uh, uh, it's incredible uh, how you uh, guys uh, get everything over and how you realize of minor issues even uh, we you have a, a a feeling of perfection and that's really really important this is top quality product uh, i haven't felt this in other open source projects and um, finally it's it's a quality thing. It, I think it, taking everything as a whole, uh, Wasabi is is a great place to to work in, and I'm really proud of it. And that's it. I think I cannot say anything than uh, good works, good words, and good work, everyone. Con uh, congratulate everyone here. Yeah, and actually, your, the search bar that you implemented is, is a perfect example of, of what I mentioned earlier, that this is a really cool feature, um, and it's very useful already as it is. But you know, you even have that PR that uh, includes to search, for example, for transaction ID and address and stuff like this, right? And that's just a glimpse of the potential that we have now. Um, that where we can further refine the wallet experience tremendously, you know, like a, a feature like is this address in mind? Just paste something in and shows you which wallet it belongs to and the details associated with it. That, that that's really powerful and it's great to see that we we have those basic foundations in this release. Uh, but yeah, there's it's just one example of many of how much more potential there is uh, in in many different aspects. So yeah, thanks Jose for making that search bar happen. It's a pretty cool feature. It's a pleasure. Marnix. How about you? What have you been tinkering on? Uh, you're also a newer contributor to the project uh, and you've grown and contributed in quite a couple different areas. So what was your experience like? Hey, uh, yes, been quite a ride. Looking forward to this day. Everyone, of course, for two years plus finally happened. And even this is just the beginning of uh, Wasabi 2.0, of course. And yeah, let's see, but we have already come far and it's an awesome project. The wallet is great and super happy that the day is finally here. Let, awesome. let me just mention someone who could not be here, who was the person who created most of the UI stuff for Wasabi Wallet 1.2. And now with the team with Wasabi Wallet 2.2. And it's Dan Ramsey. He's a maintainer of Avalonia, the UI framework Wasabi is using, and he's actually having a, another child today, a real one, not only Wasabi Wallet 1.2. Turns out 
this was the day when, when uh, he or she was born. So I just wanted to congratulate him for that. Uh, likewise, and uh, he's been doing really awesome work. That's one of the things I mentioned earlier, where we were shifting goal, po uh, goal posts uh, throughout the progress. And we started out with, hey, let's just, you know, upgrade the Avalonia backend and make the exact same user interface, you know, some minor changes, but nothing much. <laughs> and all of a sudden, no, how about we do it completely from scratch? Uh, uh, but uh, that, yeah, turned into a behemoth work, uh, but then managed it uh, excellently. Uh, and also here to mention just that collaboration of the Wasabi team and the Avalonia um, framework, uh, like the upstream contributions uh, that that we make and the help that we get from upstream to make Wasabi better is, is just insanely awesome. Like that's one of the, my favorite parts of the software of how we collaborate with upstream dependencies. And then it's doing an awesome job of uh, standing there on both sides uh, and being that link to make sure it works as good as it does now. Uh, that's that's super valuable. Yeah, he, you know, and he, he called it basically by himself, uh, the fir first 1.0 the wasabi GUI, you know, just before breaking Bitcoin in Lisbon. Yeah, he, he basically rock started in, in a couple of days or weeks. And now it took him two years <laughs> to do it this time. <laughs> uh, and a bunch of more uh, cold monkeys to help along. But ultimately, I think the, the difference shows uh, this is quite slick and robust. But again, lots of potential. Uh, it's, it's far from perfect. We have a bunch of work to do to make it even better. And we also have El Sirion in the chat. Um, he is working on some other awesome Chomian eCash, or, well, eCash magic, and that's federated eCash for money warehouses with Fedimint. So, El Sirion, what's up? Hey, sorry for being late, uh, but didn't want to miss no worries. the release. Uh, I've been waiting for it for a long time and really happy that it's finally out. So, uh, next challenge is probably getting it to run on NixOS. <laughs> as always <laughs> yes indeed not a supported operating system but would be cool if we can make that happen you know in general wait, Nixos, wait. It, there is a, a, a someone that created a, a package for for wasabi it's like not official but that's that would be awesome it, it, it is available in fact i have for Nixos, 2. Yes. you think and uh, i don't think so no but but anyway, as I, as I told you, I, I use NixOS, so it it works perfectly, right? Yeah. The the if only the only thing is that I, I I use my I mean or you or you patch the, the Tor or use the the install Tor from from Nix, but that is the only thing basically that have to change. It's, it works perfectly. Yeah, that sounds awesome, and looking forward to building a Nix derivation. So I can try it out and yeah, not be running awesome, in sure. some uh, weird uh, Steam run environment, as you always do when you don't know how to get something to run. <laughs> uh, and, you know, NixOS is used on a lot of uh, servers and the kind of headless Wasabi server uh, with a RPC server interface, you know, the, the rudiments of it are there. But again, it's, it's far from being perfect, uh, and we didn't really spend much time on it uh, before this release. Uh, however, I think it's a, a bunch of people are interested in making that a lot better. So I'm hoping that the future work here will make the life of Atlas server operators a lot better, including NixOS. Yeah, it would be an awesome addition to Nix Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah we, we talked about this a while ago already, and one of the big problems, for example, was that uh, the, you could not generate a new wallet exclusively in the headless daemon uh, because of some yeah, weird architecture quirks. So stuff like this was always a bit of a handicap. And I'm not sure how much of that is fixed. <laughs> but yeah, there are workarounds. Um, but hopefully it's going to be more pretty in the future. Uh, but Kixuno has something to say. Yeah, I wanted to ask if there is any roadmap or if there is any priority or whatever about this topic. So so I, I would like to have an idea like when it could possibly be available. Well, that's a super good question. You know, to be honest, for a large extent, we were kind of heads down preparing this release and we'll have to take a breath and reevaluate now afterwards uh, of what should be the future priorities. But at, at least for me personally, having a good headless experience is uh, and, and a good RPC server uh, is going to be overall very important. I would like if someone could do the work 
just you know unfortunately i'm not the dictator of the free software project so it gets tough to coordinate people as usual but i know that lucas is is also interested in this to at least some extent but he's also interested in much of other topics so yeah to be honest really tough to say about the roadmap right now other than we have a bunch of ideas and it's going to be super difficult to prioritize on which ones we should focus on we have a bunch of ideas I've been working on what comes after Wasabi 2.0. And of course, there is no roadmap. But what I was trying to do is that I am trying to collect the ideas and somehow organize them into a coherent representation of them. And I came up with three categories. One would be maintenance, the other scaling, and the third is innovation. Regarding maintenance, it's... uh, it's not only just maintenance, it's improving the existing things, right? That's, uh, that's where we will have to pay a lot of attention in the future. But other than that, uh, as we are growing, we are able to get into different things. And, and that's when scaling and innovation comes in. Now, in the innovation part, that's what all we've been doing so far with, with Wasabi Wallet. We were trying to make non-incremental, meaningful, significant improvements based on a lot of research. And now I believe we came to a point where significant improvements would be only possible if we could involve the Lightning Network, because in a, in a high level, the only issue left is that people who have low amount of value in their wallet, it's going to be expensive. Maybe not today, but, uh, you know, how do you scale a blockchain? You don't. So eventually it is going to get more and more expensive for low value people. And that's when the Lightning Network comes in. And that's most likely is the future at this point. I think we can say that. So. We started the Lightning Network Research Grant where we are trying to design a privacy oriented, but we gave out as a task, research task to, to design privacy guarantees for Lightning Network or, or, or do anything with, with that, right? Like maybe just do a survey on, on, Hey, how private is Lightning Network? Because at this point, there are a lot of questions. But anyhow, that's, uh, that's, that's the direction we started going. And finally, the scaling part, which is going to be the next step. And scaling means we should enable the usage of Mustabi for more type of users. For example, there are four, four main things actually. But for example, one of the, <laughs> the thing is that, well, guess what? Not everyone speaks English. So it would be good to have a localization. So that might be the next thing we are working on. It's, it's not probably not as large as a job as the rest that I'm, I'm talking about. The other ones are going to other platforms, maybe mobile or, or hardware wallet, native hardware wallet coin join integration. So currently people cannot do hardware wallets with, with, with coin joins. That's, uh, Cannot do coin joins with hardware wallets. So, so that's, uh, that's, that would be quite cool if we could, uh, right? Because that's, that's a safer way to, to store your value, having it in a hardware wallet rather than in a hot wallet, right? Like in Wasabi right now. And the final category, which brings back to your question would be the developer tools. So there are projects those are interested in, in using Wasabi Wallet among some chain cases, if Dan is still here. Uh, so we would like to make, make things easier for, for them. And one of the way to make things easier for, for integrating Wasabi Wallet would be RPC and Daemon and well documented with nice user guides, maybe even video guides and tutorials, good project tutorials, right? Like that would be the ideal way to, to go about that. So, so that's when, where it comes in. As you can see, this is the headless mode of Wasabi is certainly in the bucket of ideas that might come next, but, but we did not decide yet. We don't have a roadmap. It's a, it's just an ideas. 
yeah, it's coming in two weeks. I mean, maybe a question for you, El Sirion. Uh, like your your work on the Chomian eCash bank is quite nice, uh, and I I wonder how you would uh, like how you currently deal with on chain privacy for your federation, uh, and you know how CoinJoin might help you in the future. That's actually a great question. Like currently, we don't deal with that at all because right now federated eCash is only a privacy a means to gain privacy for users. And users don't really have to think about like the UTXOs of the Federation all that much because their main way of interacting with the Federation is through Lightning. And there they already have pretty good privacy properties because whenever they send to receive on Lightning, the other side is uh, eCache. And eCache has like the best privacy you can get essentially. Like um, you should have like full anonymity for the sender or recipient um, on the eCache side, respectively. Like the, the main problem currently we're thinking about is Lightning privacy. So for example, if you are sending money to some other Lightning node, then you generally leak their uh, node ID. And so while you don't leak who is the sender, you leak something about the recipient, which might in turn leak something about the sender again. Like there are these complicated uh, problems that like if there's anything that's being leaked then that might be in relation to uh, like the user who um, is using eCache and does everything right but like if the other side uh, leaks something then that's a problem so on chain like in long term what i'd wish for is that all these layer two and layer three solutions like for example federated eCache or also like liquid other federations like bigger custodians like single users that they in the long term will use uh, UTXOs of common denominations. Like that's what you're already doing with uh, Wabi Zabi or Wasabi 2.0. And you have a bunch of common denominations that users can use to create uh, UTXOs in. And then you can spend them again. But uh, like currently, when you want to like pay for goods and services on chain, you'd need to grind down these common denominations because they typically don't fit exactly what you want to pay. But in the future, I imagine like most of the commerce moves in, into the upper layers. Like your actual day-to-day -day, uh, transferring of money moves to Lightning, moves to Federated eCash. And so what you can do on chain is you only send common denominations. And once we hit that point that nobody does arbitrary denomination UTXOs anymore, or like most people don't, then coin joints would be so much more uh, powerful because suddenly you don't have any toxic change anymore. You just create a big coin join that takes like common denominations as inputs and common denominations as outputs. And maybe you add some UTXO for fees that uh, is not of a common denomination because you have to remove a little bit for fees. But in general, you would uh, just recycle like common denomination UTXOs and just keep them in these denominations, making coin joins much more efficient. And like that's the future I hope for with Bitcoin. And I hope that Wabi Zabi, it's a great protocol. Like um, the eCash part makes it very resilient against all kinds of like de anonymization attacks. Like it's the gold standard essentially when it comes to privacy. And if we figure some things out on the like coin selection side, like which denominations we choose, then I think this can be a protocol that uh, we use for many, many years or decades. So really looking forward to that future. Yeah, nice. That's really awesome to hear. Uh, one thing that I'd also like to bring up is that I think uh, there is a possibility that Wasabi could make great use of something like Fadiment, uh, because I do believe that uh, it it might make sense to have some custodial layer with cheap and small value payments uh, to help alleviate some of the problems in the coin join. Um, uh, uh, and yeah, I think that, I mean, either that custodial bank can use the Wabi Sabi anonymous credentials as a centralized uh, money warehouse, or of course, Fediment comes in with a decentralized money warehouse in a federation. Uh, uh, and uh, But uh, in general, the idea might be interesting um but yeah difficult. yeah i think they're <laughs> indeed very complementary in nature like for big amounts uh Barbie Sabi is still the way to go or 
like uh, coin joins in general, because like you don't want to trust the federation with like hundreds of your bitcoins, and it probably wouldn't be a, a a good way to mix anyway, because the federation might not be big enough uh, or doesn't have enough uh, throughput, enough flow, and you can probably achieve much higher flow with uh, coin joins because people don't have to trust like the coordinator; it's trustless. And on the other hand, if you do small payments, then as you said. Like it makes much more sense to trust such an entity or no power I mentioned it. Like we have to find ways to make private payments viable. That's I think where Miniment comes in and where it uh, can help enormously. And uh, then there's also like this in between, like when you pay on chain today after coin joining with Wasabi, then you get uh, like these common denominations. And when you spend, you get some change. And what do you do with the change? Like you have to get it into some common denomination again. And you will probably get some amount of change from that. And like traditionally, like maybe it's not as big of a problem anymore because now you can just use the change to pay for fees or whatever. Like your common denominations are small enough. But what you could also do is instead of generating like really small UTXOs, you just send this change to a federation. And then after you accumulate a bit of such change, then you uh, withdraw like a bigger common denomination UTXO again. Like you do this for a month or so, and then you have like 0 0.1 Bitcoin again accumulated, you withdraw it and can do coin joins with this, this again, because it already has the common denomination, which is great. Yes, exactly. And just to hone in a bit more for the coin join service could be improved with eCash, uh, uh, like money uh, eCash, is that, for example, right, if you have these standard denominations, let's say exactly, 1.00 Bitcoin, then you might want to register exactly 1.00 Bitcoin on the output side. But the big question, of course, how are you going to pay for mining fees? And and here, the current solution is just register more inputs, basically. Uh, but of course, the alternative would be pay somehow the coordinator or uh, another third party service provider uh, to pay for the mining fee uh, by including his own inputs. Um, and that can be done via Lightning, that can be done via um, uh, eCash payments or Minimint. Uh, and I think that, yeah, that's that's enough benefit for both. Yeah, I think that's a great vision because adding out uh, inputs for fees is just a wasteful. And if you already have like common denomination inputs and you can just get them out the same size again, then mm. it makes so much sense just to pay someone to add their UTXO for fees. And I really hope that there uh, will be more work into that direction. Yes, very great. Anyone has any other ideas or thoughts or comments? Maybe the office could give us a situational update, like what's going on. Is there some news? Yes. How drunk are you? Did more champagne, pop champagne bottles pop? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> it was it uh... something. <laughs> Getting back into reality, the, the pub, actually. Getting us back to the reality. However, Adam is an euphoric laugh whenever he see the GIF, because uh, there is already a GIF about that. So the, the number of downloads is 189 currently. And the first coin join round will be there in 18 minutes but only if we will reach the input number of 150. So we will see uh, if that's going to happen. The, the number is a bit high. I mean, the minimum required number of inputs is a bit high. If you compare, for example, the number of downloads, it's almost the same. And whoever download the software, it is not deterministic that he will go and join as well. So probably the first round uh, we'll retry, but we will see. At least we will know how we are standing there because when the coordinator will restart the round, then we will know what was the, the actual number of inputs at that point. Yeah, the last I know of is uh, input registration count of 22. Uh, that was like 10 minutes ago or something. So probably more by now, but probably not enough to trigger the first round yet. Um, and in this case, if I understand it correctly, we uh, go, we abandon this current round and go into a new round, a new input registration, where uh, anyone can register again. Kiksunil, you have something on your mind. What's up? 
So there was discussion about uh, integrating Lightning. I wonder if uh, there are any plans for ZK Snacks to also provide like Lightning uh, service, uh, Lightning services like uh, some popular mobile wallets do, or if there is idea to just make it available and let people connect uh, to their own uh, nodes. Uh, I mean, not their own, but uh, to the nodes they select themselves or at random or based on some recommendation or whatever? That's a really good question. Uh, and in general, it's uh, it's definitely something that we're looking into because Lightning service providers are another great Bitcoin native business model alongside to join coordination. Um, of course, different in many aspects. If we actually end up doing it, uh, I guess depends on the research that we're doing right now. Um, because if we find that we can have a lightweight private by default wallet experience or architecture without any third party service providers, well, then we will probably do that. Um, however, I'm thinking, uh, and that's just an intuition, is that a service provider will alleviate a lot of problems and frictions uh, in, in Lightning. Uh, and then the big question is, can we design a protocol for this Lightning service provider to perform the service in the in in the most privacy optimized way and you know here are things like ck channels or um, you know maybe coordinated channel factories or or stuff like this yeah lots of possible things you know maybe some blinded route path calculations or what whatever might be possible and to be honest i don't know about all half of these so we we will see if it's necessary and if we're able to provide a useful service uh, according to our privacy ethos. And yeah, in any case, uh, it's a long way out. Uh, so it will come to you in two weeks, of course. Yeah, one of the things I had in mind is maybe it could be uh, combinable with uh, CoinJoin. So for instance, it could be a way of dealing with uh, change outputs. So you could CoinJoin uh, and uh, put the change directly into a lightning channel that is open with ZK Snacks, which provides a way to then like mix up the amount, especially if this was implemented on top of Taproot, it, it would actually improve privacy even of those people who don't use this. Yeah, for sure. And again, maybe we can do even better, right, and get some block space efficiencies by something like a, a, a private channel factory. Uh, and that is, of course, great for, for a conjoin coordinator because a channel factory, after all, is just a conjoin of many users opening a channel in a single output. Um, but yeah, that also, also the, these whole uh, coin swaps and lightning channels and stuff like this, they, as you say, increase the subset ambiguity of every coin join participant, even if they don't use these fancy second layer magic, especially if Taproot is involved. So uh, yeah, it's, it, it's a big idea. It's it's a lot of work, <laughs> so we will consider. Again, there's so much to do. Right? These are all awesome ideas. The question is just which of them do we tackle first? And that's just yeah, super difficult. But that's why feedback rounds like this are super important, right? Because we see what what you guys think are uh, is important to tackle next. Adam, do you have anything else to bring up? No, I'm good. Anyone is there else? any uh, is there any uh, marketing on like Reddit? I know there was like a tweet that went out, but are there any other like campaigns right now to get some early liquidity in? I think there is. Did not yet confirm, but there should be. So there's like a Reddit post somewhere about this. I believe yes. There's also a blog post on blog.wasabiwallet.io, and it's reddit.com/c/wasabiwallet or something like that. Okay, so I see a. Uh... I see a post from four minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, posted. You see that synchronicity. At least someone is working here. All right, fellas, if there's nothing else to discuss, I would say let's conclude uh, this Wasabi Wallet 2.0 release live stream party. Uh, it was nice to get everyone uh, involved with sharing a bit of the story of how we got to this point. And thanks for the people joining uh, with some nice questions. Um, keep it coming. Uh, we're, we're happy for feedback. Let us know what you think of the new wallet, the new user interface, the new coin join functionality. Uh, and let's see how we can make Wasabi 2.0 even better in the upcoming versions. Uh, there's a lot of room uh, to do that. Uh, so I'm eager for all the future contributions and quite bullish on what we're about to build. If you got any final words, um, 
Please do, otherwise we'll end the stream. Bitcoin to the moon. Privacy by default. 2.0 to the moon. If you open a champagne, always make sure you don't have anything above you. Or put your thumb on top of the cork. Don't put the cat in the microwave. your skills. Build your dreams. Care for yourself. Find your love. Develop your ideas. Transactions are your business. Reclaim your privacy.